If you found your place and you love Jesus, shout amen. Amen. The Bible says in verse number 1, it says, And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. There, then there came some and told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazaton Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art thou not Art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in all thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of the land before the people, thy people Israel, and gave us it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary, Therein for thy name, saying, listen to this, church, listen to this. Listen to the verse 9. It says, if when evil come upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in the house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then... That will hear and help. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for your blessings. God, we thank you for God for going before us. God, and just showing up. God, I pray that, that this morning, God, that you hide me behind you. God, I pray that nobody sees me, but God, that they just see you and just hear from you this morning. Uh, God, just use me this morning as a mouthpiece, God. God, give us ears to hear and hearts to take in, God. It's your word. God, it says that it will not go out and return void. God, it can't. God, I pray your blessings over this service. God, thank you for what you've already done and what you're going to do here this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. I was sitting uh, around last, last night and I couldn't think, of, uh, couldn't think of necessarily a title for this sermon this morning. Um, And it's amazing to me how God goes before us and He lines everything up because everything that we've talked about this morning from Exodus to to, to people's uh, speaking out upon God and just about how God's done this and about how how God's done that, I began to just think about this and God gave this, this title to me last night, The Help in a Battle. The help in a battle, and I, I actually texted Jamie while I was sitting up on, on, the, on the front pew because I slam forgot to get the mic, so I walked back there, got the mic, and then slam forgot to tell him what, anything I was preaching. But I don't think you can see the, the things no way, so it don't matter. Uh, but, but the help, and the way that I was going to put that, Clint, was the help in all caps. In a battle being lowercase. Because you see... We, This week, uh, in the past, in the future, guess what we're going to face in life? We're going to face battles. We're going to go through things in life. Uh, uh, Some people in here have fought physical battles. Some people have have been in war and fought in combat. Not all of us, but some of them. Some folks have been in emotional battles this week. Some people have been in, 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 in mental battles this week. But you know what every one of us have been in this week? Spiritual battles. Yeah. Amen. We've been in spiritual battles all week. And so if I was to go around the room and I was to ask, you know, what kind of battle you've been in, they would all be different. 
They may have all they they may associate with one of those four things that I just told you about battles, and there's probably more. But you know what? Those battles they differ from day to day, from week to week, from hour to hour, from minute to minute. We go through different things this week, and hey, next week, guess what? We'll probably face something that'll be a little bit more different. But you know what always remains the same? Is the help. The help always remains the same. It it never goes away. It it never sleeps. nor It never slumbers. It always remains the same. And in case you don't know, the help is none other than the Lord. It's none other than Yahweh. It's none other than Jesus Christ. And so there may be different varieties of of battles that, that, that you and I go through, but the help always remains the same. It never changes. He's always the same, and He's always there, Brother Josh, for you and for me any time that we ever need Him. No matter what time of the day or no matter what time of the night, He's always there. And here we find... Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, excuse me, I'm terrible with that because uh, I'm just terrible with that word. But Jehoshaphat is, is sitting there and he's just come out, man, just, just literally uh, almost died in battle. Been in a battle, he, he kind of uh, strayed away from the Lord and, and finds himself with, with a king by the name of Ahab. And all of a sudden, just to paint a picture for you, they're in battle and, and King Ahab has done, these Syrians, they're looking for the king, they're looking for Ahab. And all of a sudden, they they, they find themselves in battle, and and, and Jehoshaphat is with them, and Ahab's in battle. And all of these Syrians, they're looking for Ahab. So you know what Ahab does? They they go to battle, and Ahab puts on clothes to look like another troop. And go, I think it's chapter 18, 17 or 18. He puts on clothes to kind of blend in with the troops. Blends in like he's a troop and not a king. And so you know who that leaves looking like a king? Jehoshaphat. He's looking up there and all of a sudden all of these people, they come around him, Brother Robert, and they want to kill him. But I want you to read this. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 18 and 31, this is just kind of describing what's going on, and I promise you we're going somewhere. It says, Therefore they compassed about him to fight. They've got Jehoshaphat surrounded, Brother Wes. They said, this is, this is the one. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord did what? The Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him. Friend, can I tell you, he's our help. And I can't stress that enough. I don't know what battle you're facing. You might be, majority of everybody in here is in one right now. Emotional, whatever the case may be, we're all in one right now. And it's the same way with Jehoshaphat. As he comes to this place, he, 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 he finds himself coming out of a place where, where basically he's, he's kind of strayed away from God. And now all of a sudden, he's back on track. He, he's doing things right. And you know what happens again? All of a sudden, these people are coming against him already. The people in verse verse number 2, I think, it it says that they come. Then there came some telling Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee. Man, you, you ever been trying to do right? You come out of doing wrong, and all of a sudden you try to do right, and man, guess what happens? You face with another battle. You're faced with another, 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 another battle, another attack, whether emotional, physical, whatever it is. All of a sudden, you find yourself in the middle of another battle, and the same here was with Jehoshaphat. I just got just a few things that I want you to see with Jehoshaphat that I hope you'll be able to take something from this today and be able to apply it to your life and, and be able to, to, to just walk a new walk, such as Brother Al said, you know, he said he wasn't walking in chains and all that. Well, I can, I can encourage you this morning that neither do you, you do not have to either. But what I want you to see is, is the worry 
of Jehoshaphat. The Bible says in verse 3, the first thing after he gets this news, Brother Greg, he gets his news and all of a sudden, you know what it says he done? He feared. You see, too many times when we look at the Bible... We want to take these people in the Bible and set them up on a pedestal as if they're, man, they're great, that they're, they're awesome people, they never sinned, they never done nothing wrong. But in all reality, you know what the thing is? They were just like us. They battled stuff, the same stuff that we face. That they were wrapped in this thing called flesh and blood just like we are. And hey, whenever troubled times come, you know what Jehoshaphat done? He feared, he got worried. He found himself right off the get-go the first thing that happens is the flesh wants to come up and wants to cause fear and to cause worry in his life. It causes him worry because he gets this news, mind you, he gets this news and he's not been preparing for a battle. All of a sudden these people are just within hours of being there. You ever had that happen? All of a sudden, something just come out of nowhere. Phone call, text message. You see something on Facebook. Something hits you, and then you know what you always, and, and nobody's perfect in here. Me and Brother Melvin was talking about that. Man, none of us are perfect in here. We can sit in here, and we can act like, hey, we put on our Sunday best, and man, man, we got it everything together. But when trouble comes to our house, 99.9% of us, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I probably should say 100% of us, you know what the first thing we do is? We start to fear. We start to worry. Our babies wake up sick. Brother Scott, guess what we do? We go to worrying. Things don't happen the way we ought to. We go to worrying. We find ourselves in, the, in this state to where we, we're just like Jehoshaphat as is, is we start to fear and we start to worry. These people were within hours of coming to battle and coming against him, and he has nothing ready. He's not ready. But, verse 3, right after it says Jehoshaphat feared, the Bible says, and set himself to seek the Lord. And proclaim the fast throughout all of Judah. I was looking at that word, that word to, to set himself or, or to seek the Lord. And it all kind of comes together once you see the meaning of it. When it says to set himself to seek the Lord. It says, Brother Robert, that he turned his face to the Lord. He turned his face to the Lord. To the Lord. He got alone by himself and he gets his face to the Lord. You know what happens when you put your face to something? That's where all your attention goes. That's where everything goes. You see, I can be at the house and I can be sitting down and we can be sitting on TV and my wife can be talking to me and you know what I can be doing? I can be listening but I can be watching TV at the same time. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You can be in two places at once. You can be trying to do two things at one time. But friend, can I tell you, whenever Jehoshaphat got serious, whenever that come to him, he set his face upon the Lord. You know why? Because he wanted all his attention. He wanted not only just to be able to look and try to see what the Lord was wanting him to do, but he wanted to be able to hear what the Lord was going to say. And friend, sometimes, sometimes we do just like I do sometimes. Is we'll be sitting there watching TV and we'll be listening to something else. It's the same way with Christ and with our relationship with God. Is sometimes we'll be sitting there and we'll have our eyes sitting there focused on this thing. And we'll be trying to listen to what God has to say. But you know what? We can't because our focus is somewhere else. Or our attention is on this or it's on that. Our ears are listening to what the world says or what this one says or what that one says. And our eyes may be trying to focus but we can't do it. So can I encourage you this morning to set yourself and set your attention to seek the Lord in everything that we do. 
This country's falling apart. It has been falling apart. It's no new news. It's not new to us. Why? Because we've been looking at the TV and listening for something else. We've had our ear open to what God's going to say, but our eyes, Brother Taylor, have been focused on the outside world. We've been focusing on everything else but the help. But here, man, what a word of encouragement through the worry, through all of that, that Jehoshaphat, all of a sudden, he goes from fearing to knowing in which and where the help comes from. The help. Not only do you see the worry, but I want you to see the The waiting upon the Lord. Jehoshaphat and Judah, they waited upon the Lord. I read all of that to you. And the Bible says, And now behold, in verse 10, The children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, but when they came into the land of Egypt, but they turned them from away and destroyed them not. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast out of thy possessions which thou hast given us to inherit. This is a prayer. Now, mind you, this is a prayer that Jehoshaphat is praying. It says, O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. He says, we can't do nothing. And then read what he says. It says, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. He says, our eyes are staying upon thee. It says, then... then, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, and the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asphah, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. So get this vision that Jehoshaphat has stepped out and he's gone and he's seeking the Lord and he's called all of Judah. He's called all of them there. And they're all standing before he's just prayed this prayer. And the Bible says, Neither know we what to do, our eyes are upon thee. And the Bible says, And all of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, their children. It says they all were before him. And all of a sudden the Spirit comes upon Jehaziel. And this is what he said. It says, And he said, Hearken ye all of Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, And thou, King Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you. Listen, listen to this encouragement. Be not afraid, nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they will come up to the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need fight. Listen, ye shall not need fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah. And Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Man, sometimes we find ourselves so quick and we we try to find uh, ourselves whenever troubles come, whenever battles come. You know, we try to we try to handle it all on our own, and we try to just do what what we think is right, and, and we'll go and we'll fight and we'll fight and we'll fight to no avail. We'll, we'll, we'll do everything that we can do, Brother Donald. And nothing happens. We find ourselves back in the same spot that we was in just before. No difference. Nothing's gone. We, we haven't prevailed over the victory. We haven't got nothing. We're back to where we was. Jehoshaphat says to wait. Jehaziel says to wait on the Lord. 
to wait on him. Friend, that's what, I believe that's what we all can do sometimes. Is, is we could quit just trying to do it all on our own. Quit trying to do what we think is right. Quit trying to put our two cents in it and try to add to what, 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 what we need to do or what we don't need to do. And man, just listen to God just to stand still and just to wait upon the Lord. Because the Bible says right there in the all of Judah did what? They stood before the Lord. It didn't say that they walked. It didn't say that they'd done nothing else. It didn't say that they tried to do this or to do that. You know, they just stood. They just done this. They just stood there, just waiting on the Lord. They didn't do nothing else. I'm going to get it on this side. They just stood and just waited upon the Lord. Because you know what? His ways are a lot better than mine. His ways are a whole lot better. You know why? Because he already knows the outcome. I don't. He already knows. So if I can encourage you this morning, just wait upon the Lord. Wait upon him. Don't try to do it on our own. Man, man, I'm guilty of it. I believe every man in here is guilty of that. Some comes up and we think we can handle it upon our own. Friend, can I tell you? We can't. But then, while they waited, you know what they did? While they waited, they worshiped. The Bible says in verse 18, it says, And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Judah fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Man, that sounds like a whole lot of worshiping to me. And the Bible says, And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness to Tekoa. And as they went forth, (laughs) Oh, glory. The Bible says that as they're on their way, that they start to worship the Lord. They're, They're worshiping the Lord. And then that that text right there in the Bible says that as they're on their way into the wilderness, as they're on their way to battle, you know what Jehoshaphat says? He says, hold up. Just hold up. Hold up. Verse 20. It says, and as they went forward, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah. And ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so ye, so shall ye prosper. You know what I'm looking at out here? I'm looking at a bunch of people that as soon as you leave this place, You know what you're going to step out of those doors onto? You're going to step out onto the battlefield. You're going to be in your way on your journey to a battle. And you know what I'm here to tell you? Believe in God. Believe that he's he's all you'll ever need. Believe that he is enough as we talked about earlier. Believe that. Why? Because In Exodus this morning, we were talking about it, and I want to get it right. In Exodus this morning, David done an awesome job this morning, but but in verse 2, it says, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Man, guess what? He's still the same. The Bible says that he changed not. You know, if he brought us out, brought them out of there, guess what he can do for you? Whatever it is that we need, he can do it. I'm telling you, he can do it. And I believe that if we just get ourselves and just uh, decrease, if we just decrease so that he 
can fill us up with the increase, then you know what? We'll find ourselves praying more. We'll find ourselves setting aside time to worship Him. Hey, we'll find ourselves turning on that 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 gospel station or or, or the Christian music station. And you know what? We'll find ourselves doing each and every day. We'll find ourselves hungering and thirsting after the word. Why? You know what this is? This is literally him. Me and my brother were talking this morning. And I said, man, do you, but listen, when you open up the word of God, it's literally God speaking. She ain't got it. It's literally, if you walked outside, You'd see everything that he created. If you look up, you see everything that he created. If the earth was such and such closer to the sun, brother, brother Taylor, we'd burn up. If it was such and such further away, guess what? We'd freeze to death. It's all him. It's all him. I can promise you that it's all him. Friend, that is God speaking to us. Jehoshaphat finds himself, he just says, just believe God, friend. Whenever you leave this place today, I want you to think on those promises. And just like this prayer done as Jehoshaphat was praying, he, he, he began to take on account of the things that happened in the past. You see, when you face this battle that you're going to face tomorrow, you know what the best thing we can do is to think upon the things of the past. And think about the things that God's done before. Hey, God's healed me of cancer. Hey, God's touched my foot. Hey, God's yeah. done this. or God's done that. God gave me a new child, another child. God done all of this. And believe in God. And believe what he done. God healed a baby's arm. Never forget it. Won't never forget it. God, I've seen God heal cancer. I've seen God take take blood levels and make them right. To, 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 I've seen it. I've seen it that whenever uh, the odds were 98% chance against God. I've seen that. I've seen God show up for, for kids in the back, man, whenever they, they're sick and they're afflicted and they just need a touch from the Father. And all of a sudden he shows up. And when they get into service, man, not even 15 minutes, all of a sudden the baby's feeling a whole lot different and a whole lot better. Why? It's not because of me. It's not because of you. It's all because of him. And if we just believe, if we just believe, I'm telling you, if we just believe that, hey, that every time our baby's sick, every time our baby's afflicted, if we just believe that God can touch that fever, God can touch anything, he can do it. I promise you, he can do it. You see the worry. You see the waiting. You see the worship. But also, I want you to see something. Hey, God showed me this one. Go to verse number two, please. Let me tell you what I have. stand and you just wait upon the Lord and while you wait and you just worship him why because he's worthy you see they were able to watch what the Lord had done verse 22 it says and when they began to sing and to praise mind you they ain't got to the battle yet made it to the battle yet, but they're worshiping God before they even get to the battle. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes, bushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten, for the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of the Mount of Seir, utterly to 
slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy one another. And look at this. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude. And behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth. And the Bible says, and none escaped. You see, if we just wait upon him, if we just worship him for who he is, then we'll be able to just sit back and we'll be able just to watch what he does. We'll be able just to sit back. And, and every time I, I can't help but think of Al back there in the back. It's like a glow now. But every time I always think about just, just where Al's been and just the things that I've seen of the old Al, and, and all of a sudden you give it to God and you sit back and you're just able to watch. And to see what God can do. You can see. Now, now he's the loudest one in here. Hey, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hey, I'll shout over it. Bless God. Thank God that he is. You see, and not, not only did God go before him because of all of that. But if you read on further in the chapter. They were able to get all of the spoil. That were there. And it took them a two days journey to get everything. It took them two days to go back and to get all the spoils. So you say, well, what, what, what all are you saying, preacher? What all are you saying? The help don't change. He was the same in the Bible. He was the same in Jehoshaphat's time. And guess what? He's the same in our time. He ain't changed none. He's still the same. He changes not. He's still the same. And I think that if we could if we could just worship him before we go into battle this week, if we could just get our hearts and our minds set that, hey, that no matter what comes before me, no matter what is, is up ahead of me, hey, that I'm just going to believe in God. I'm just going to trust in his promises. I'm going to trust him because he knows a whole lot more than what I do. I can promise you, friend, that whenever you get to those battles, hey, you won't even have to lift a finger. Why? Because he'll be the go before you and you'll get there and they'll all be laid out before you and you'll just be able to, to turn back and you'll know that I didn't do it but he did I didn't do it it wasn't nothing of my doing when Peter come out of prison when he come to that last gate brother Donald Boone and it opened up on his home the Bible says that as he, as, he, as he got up to the end of it he turned around and he looked once he come to and he said that I know of a surety that it was the Lord that hath delivered 